This is Bach, an explosives detection canine for the Transportation Security Administration, or TSA. Ready? Go seek. Personally, I feel if my dog screened that person that I would put myself, my family, or my mom on that plane. My dog is that good that nothing has come past him. Every day, Bach and his handler, Gary, will screen between three and 4,000 passengers for explosives at Philadelphia International Airport. But before Bach and Gary started working together as an explosives detection team. Very good, feather, feather, nice. They spent 16 weeks training here at the TSA K-9 Training Center at Lackland Air Force Base in San Antonio, Texas. The TSA National Explosives Detection K-9 program graduates more than 300 dogs and more than 150 handlers every year. They train in mock airplanes and airport terminals where they learn crucial techniques they'll have to master before graduating. There is nothing more effective out there in all of TSA's arsenal. A well-trained dog team is truly a force multiplier that really combats terrorism. There are more than 1,000 TSA K-9 teams deployed nationwide. The starting pay for a handler is about $43,000 a year. So the first thing where we start is teaching the dog the basic fundamentals of how to use their nose to find something. And luckily for us, dogs already naturally do that. So we just manipulate the environment so we can tap into their natural abilities. One of those environments is a mock wide-body aircraft, similar to one that they might encounter in the real world. Uzi, a two-year-old Belgian Malinois, was around 20 days into training. The dogs are first taught to search for their favorite toy and are rewarded once they find it. Oh, you got it, good man, you got it, puppy, you got it. Again, we buy these dogs for drive. That dog is going to want that toy. Oh, good man, good man, good man. So as you can see, we're just kind of using the reward to shape the behavior and getting him used to going in, searching the rows. About 160 dogs are in training at any given time, and they come in all shapes and sizes. Through years of trials and tribulations, we have honed in on essentially seven different breeds. So you have your Belgian Malinois, your German Shepherds. We also have the Labrador Retrievers, the German Short Hair Pointers, the Vizlas, those type of dogs. And we found that they have the innate ability, both cognitively and with their olfactory, that we have a lot of positive results with those specific breeds. Hupsy, hupsy. As the dogs progress, trainers introduce training aids filled with explosive materials and reward the dogs for finding them. Oh boy. This dog, Poopy, a two-year-old German short-haired pointer, was 70 days into training. Through repeated exercises, the dogs learn that detecting the odor earns them their toy and begin searching for the odor itself. We condition them that this piece that you're looking for means a whole lot and we use the toy to do that. So as the dog's going through and they're searching and sniffing, when they catch that odor, that scent, their body reacts as if we just gave them a toy. So we teach our dogs what's called a passive final response. So once they have worked and located something, we teach them to either go into a sit or a down. Ooh, good man. The roots of the program date back to March 7th, 1972, when a bomb threat was called in on a TWA flight right after it took off from JFK International Airport, forcing the plane to turn around and land. A team through the New York Police Department trained to detect explosives happened to be at JFK at the same time. This canine named Brandy went onto the aircraft, conducted a search and alerted to what looked to be a pilot's briefcase adjacent to the cockpit. Explosive ordnance disposal came in, grabbed the briefcase and disarmed it 12 minutes before it exploded. That same day, President Nixon ordered the creation of the FAA Explosives Detection K-9 team, which was transferred to the TSA following its creation in response to the terrorist attacks on September 11, 2001. And through the years, we have continued to grow as a program. Today, 
the TSA trains its dogs to be able to detect dozens of different scents based on recent intelligence. Unfortunately, we're unable to specifically speak to the quantities of explosives that these dogs are trained to find, but we want them to be super good at specific explosives based on the threat. Good puppy, good puppy. I like it, puppy. After six to eight weeks of working with the trainers, the dogs are introduced to their future handlers, whom they'll finish the program with. Handlers in training come from across the country and must meet certain criteria in order to be accepted into the program. I'll tell you, it's very competitive to get into canine because there's a lot of responsibility. Seeing our dogs at our airport, what they were capable of doing, and I was in awe. And so I started researching upon them and found out that's definitely what I wanted to partake as my next step in my career. Handlers get paired with a dog three to four weeks into their training. We try to get to know our students in and out, and we also know our dogs and what their abilities are. They have to be able to rely on each other. If you don't have a good pairing between the dog and the handler, it's just not going to work. This is Ubel. He is a two-year-old German Shepherd. He's a rambunctious man, but he's a cool partner to work with. Jessica and Ubel are part of the TSA's 16-week passenger screening course which is five weeks longer than the traditional explosives detection course. Remember the feather. Walk straight. Don't let him walk you at an angle. Walk straight. Hold your ground. Hold your ground. Walk straight. Very good. Working in a simulated airport terminal complete with actors posing as bystanders, canine teams practice screening passengers for explosive odors that have been placed on certain role players. Basically, we have the personnel come through the line we call it cutting wakes, so the dog will cut past the person left and right and hopefully pick up whatever odor that they're trained on. All right, about to bring your odor in. Once they encounter the odor they're trained on, the handler will turn around and follow the dog and reward the dog for a good behavior. Let it feather. Let it feather, feather. Speed up, Fred. That's the boy. All right, cheer him up, praise him up. Doing well on the training, I look for two things. I look for the drive of the dog. Is the dog able to commit to follow the person that has whatever it is trying to detect? And then I watch the handler's hands. Is the handler holding the dog back or is the handler releasing the leash to allow the dog to proceed? You control this. If he's standing out here and you're not ready, hold my line, please. Flip him back around, get him how you want him. Release line and then do your thing. The most common mistake is the leash control. You walk in your household dog on a leash, you let the dog be a dog, do whatever you want. But when you're doing this type of training with the dog on leash, it's a balance of when to have control and when not to have control. Nice, nice work, nice work. Good hit. They did outstanding. Again, this is on day 13. They've gone these two dogs for 13 days, and to be able to allow the dog and read that behavior, it's very good. Handlers and their dogs graduate and are deployed as a team, so their ability to work together is crucial. It's definitely a lot of fun seeing it click for the dog and watch them learn along with you or with me. So it's been a really cool experience. The dogs receive 24 to 32 weeks of training and roughly 90% of all canine teams graduate from the course. Once they do, they'll be deployed to one of the many mass transit sites across the United States. Right, go work. Like Gary Sturley and Bach. Mark, Bob. See? The team graduated from the TSA K-9 Training Center in 2016 and have been working at the Philadelphia International Airport ever since. Bach is a nine-year-old flat-coated retriever shepherd mix. He's a goofball. He's a character. He definitely has a lot to say to everybody. He loves people. He loves the job. He wakes up every morning ready to go. He has found ammunition. He has found, he has found a few things. That's really as far as I can go. Ready? Good. When we're working together, I'm focusing on making sure he is productively sniffing the wake of passengers. So as they're going by, the odor coming off of the passenger, the odor plume is coming behind and dropping down to the ground. So I'm just watching him, watching his nose and his head, looking for subtle changes that might indicate that he's picking up on something. The team also performs daily training exercises. Good boy, go find it. Where is it? Huh, where is it? So today we had a decoy. So we put a training aid on the decoy, sent the decoy in with passengers, dog pinpoints it. Good boy. Gotcha, buddy! Thank you, Maya. 
good job. Ah, what you got? Ah, what you got? Box changer behavior can range depending on the day, but when he starts spinning around in a circle, when we're working, he's onto something, he wants to go find it. To the dog, it's all the same. It's a giant game to the dog. As long as they think they're gonna get their reward, they'll go anywhere you tell them to go. Box, part of my family, comes home, he's with me 24 hours a day. Even when we go on vacation and he's in the kennel, I'm calling the kennel to make sure he's okay. Stay up. Good job, yes, good boy. Box toy is squeaky tennis ball. He will go nuts for it. <laughs> he probably heard me squeak it from all the way up here. 